Hello everyone, it's Julie from Camellia Crafts Designs again. Welcome back to my channel. I'm back with part two of the Shakespearean ladies junk journal folio flippy flappy thingy, as I call it. I'm just getting a throat sweet. Then I won't be, yeah, clearing my throat all the time. Right, so if you didn't see part one, uh, we made the base from a file folder uh, do i have another one that color if you didn't see it no it was one of these file folders i know this is a bit yellow It'd be very, the b theme one would be good with this it was just this color that's all this crafty like a peachy pinky colored craft it seems to me tanya at tatty treasures calls it blush craft craft blush that's a lovely name so yeah, then we've used these gorgeous papers from Jodia Arjet Creations. And yeah, I'm just going to crack on. That's all you need to know. If you're interested in the first part, I will have it linked below. So we put the papers on the outside. It's another one of these where I want the, pa the papers are so nice. They're going to speak for themselves. I'm not going to do any more embellishing on the outside. We're just going to put some pockets and some ephemera on the inside we're going to put a belly band there aren't we yeah and i need to cover these pieces in some paper so i did go and do a bit more printing because i decided because i don't i've not put wide spines in this i don't want to go back in the tags on other bits of card and making it really thick so i've got some of this paper card you can hear and see it now on the packet it says 250 GSM but no way on earth is this 250 GSM. I would say it's round about 210, 220. I've had this brand from Amazon before and it always states a higher GSM than what it seems to be. I don't understand GSM to be quite honest but I know generally when I've bought card the higher the GSM the thicker the card. Maybe that's not so. If you know please tell me. I love to be educated. So I've gone ahead and I've printed my two favourite pages that we have put on the front. I've printed them four to a page. So we've got two of each and I'm going to cut those down for journal cards because I can. <laughs> Is that... Yeah, they're printed pretty much straight so I can go ahead and just chop these with my trimmer. I didn't chop them first because you might have wanted to see what they look like before I chopped them out. When someone says to me you print it so many to a page, I can't always visualise it. And there's always plenty of waffling to do while I do my chopping and inking, isn't there? Yeah, she says. But I am going to get this finished in this one. It is now Sunday afternoon, the last day of February. It's absolutely lovely weather outside, 10 degrees. I've just been talking to a lovely lady in Dubai. Hmm. We've been chatting about Tim Holtz scissors. And it's 26 degrees there, which is relatively mild apparently for Dubai. I mean, you ladies in America, I don't think you'll even know what I mean by these because we use a different system to you. And yet, I can't remember. Is it, it could be Celsius, could be Fahrenheit, could be centigrade i can't remember do you know when they go chopping and changing things my brain doesn't keep up so yeah we're on a different system oh she did tell me she told me the equivalent 50 in dubai is 120. yeah so dubai obviously use the same scale as us so i think you american ladies will be the ones on the other scale where 50 is equivalent to 120. That, I just remembered that. Right, I'm also going to cut out some of these tags with my chopper. I'm just going to do the straight bits. Why struggle when you make your life easy? That looks good. I'm going to take off this, um, yeah, this turquoise line around the edge because I can't guarantee that I'm going to cut it straight with my trimmer so I'm going to go for a nothing rather than a something approach to it 
We want all or nothing. I can't guarantee all, so we're going for nothing. Yeah, I know some people prefer to just fussy cut these with the scissors. Honestly, I'm quicker doing it with this. I really am when it's a lot of straight lines like this. I'm going to fussy cut the top with my scissors, though. No, I don't think anyone's invented... Well, they have. I'm saying no one's invented a guillotine that'll cut around there. But they have, haven't they? Right. I've also printed a couple more on some... This is thinner paper. I was going to back this onto a tag before I decided not to... Yeah, I did. Before I decided not to make it too thick. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to make the belly band out of this. I'm going to just keep chopping this lady down until I've not got... <laughs> until she looks even. Now I want a bit more off this side. We don't want to chop her all the face off, do we? That wouldn't be nice, would it? I think we need to take a bit more off that arm to even her up. And then we're going to have a wide belly band, rather than a straight across one. I'm going to take that off. And I'm also going to make the top straight. So I'll then back this onto something else. There you go. So she's going to be a bit... Of, do you know, we could have just cut the corners off and made her into a tag, couldn't we? Might do that with the other one, eh? Might do. Right, cut round, yeah. We'll do the same with this lady. Just chop her up a bit. That sounds good, doesn't it? I was watching a program in bed last night called The Discovery of Witches, and the dress these ladies are wearing reminds me of what they were wearing in that, yeah? I won't go into it plot but it were 19 no it wasn't it was 1850s london i mean i i must say i'm not very well educated as far as shakespeare goes i couldn't tell you when he lived my kids will be able to tell you next year because doing them at school i never did shakespeare at school so yeah did he live around 1550 or the dress the same around 1550s it's Shakespeare, I don't know, but it reminds me of it. Right, I've got my little box underneath the card. So we've got those cut out. That's enough chopping for now. I'm going to come in and use my Tim Holtz 7-inch scissors. <laughs> so if you're watching, Nan, these are the ones. Yeah, I'm doing a bit of cutting with them. That's the lady I was talking to from Dubai. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut just on the inside of that blue line. But I'm going to keep this tag shape because I like it. And I'm not the fastest at fussy cutting. If I leave a little bit of blue and I'm not going to cry. It'll cover up with ink because I'm going to ink the edges. It's printed really nicely onto this card. I do love this card. Couldn't tell you brand. And I tend to go for cheapest decent brand if that makes any sense whatsoever when I'm ordering my card. If you get the craft card it can be quite porous and it's not that good for printing on. This is a lovely smooth. It is a photocopier card. Photocopy at laser and inkjet. That's just when we think of our jet. <laughs> I must ask Jodie what that name stands for. Right, so we've shaped those two tags. Um, I'm not going to chomp them with my corner chomper. I have got another thing that does slightly bigger holes. I'm just rummaging through my drawers to find it. I don't think there's going to be a craft lunch, but I'd normally have a couple of days. Right, where are you? <clears throat> I've been watching Fiona at Miss Paint a lot tidy her drawers today. Uh, that's not it, is it? The crafting drawers. 
and it's so yeah you'd think it was so obvious where to put things but I'm now wondering where I put this hole punch that punches the size hole I want to put in here and I don't know where it is because I don't know what category I put it in for storage here it is I haven't put it with my punches or eyelet tools I've put it in my drawer labelled favourite tools found it there it is this is a Fiskars this were only a couple of pound off Amazon and it will punch the larger hole I use it upside down so I can see where I'm punching it'll punch the perfect size hole to put one of the paper reinforcement rings round there you go and that's what size these holes are if you get it spot on center it'll look much better than mine I can you can see where to punch it did I do that one bit better I did yeah quite happy with them so I'm going to ink those up remember we're using I'm using vintage photo distress oxide I think a dark one might have been better on these tags but I like it it matches everything else and I've just printed a faux tea stain on the back whenever I'm doing a tag that I don't want too thick I'll print it on the back with faux tea stain fake tea stain yeah that's what it is in my world faux fake it's like faux fur isn't it which is a much better idea than real fur I don't mind offending people who wear real fur <laughs> sorry I'm not going to get political don't get political on YouTube it's not good right so there are my two tags these are the ones I'm going to make a belly band for so I'll shift some papers out of the way bring the actual folio back in I'll just pop a couple of tags in here so they're going to be in there they're lovely in there and the belly band I'm going to use the lady but I'm going to put another piece of Jodie's paper behind yeah Oh, I've just remembered how we're going to do a belly band across so you could have a notebook. Want I? Mmm. That's not going to work then, is it? Ah, I can't do that. Do you know what? I'll save her for another tag on another project. So I've done all, spent all that time cutting them out and I'm not going to use them. Silly woman. Oh, I'm quite disappointed with that now. Right, we've got our postcards I'm not going to ink those just yet I'll pop them in so we can have a couple there will I be able no I won't be able to put one in there tell you what I'll have one tag in a pocket there and one postcarding with that tag yeah so I'm going to get a remainder of the file folder and I'm going to pop another pocket on there to fit that in I think I need it open at one side or do you think it'll just squeeze in I think that'll just squeeze in if I put an enclosed pocket on don't you I could do another one with a little tab on like that to match in or I could just do one straight across anyway I'm definitely going to use this piece of card so I'm going to measure it like that just put a pencil mark on so it's up to the edge and then the edge of the existing pocket I'm going to get my little chopper back that what granny grabber falling over so that's good isn't it your thing that you pick things up off floor with has fallen on the floor what a dilemma so I've cut that just move you out of the way a minute Mrs Tag yeah that'll be spot on yeah I want it a bit shorter than that I'm not measuring it to any particular length oh that corner corner's a little bit damaged four inches looks about good now I'm just going to put a, a hole in it a hole a noggin as Tanya's been calling them a finger notch I've grabbed my one and a half inch circle so I'm just going to put a little finger notch in there there we go we'll ink that up and I'm still making this up as I go along it's not like I've been planning it or thinking about it since last night 
I haven't had time. <laughs> but when I'm doing a new folio or that, I don't really plan it. I just crack on and do it. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not. Oh, I need to cut that bottom corner off, don't I? Use the 7mm. Didn't really need to cut that off it just adds a little bit of detail i suppose and i'm going to i'm not going to cover this i'm going to do it if you've ever watched me green one i like to have this showing and i'm going to have that showing i'm just going to decorate the pocket not the back yeah i'm going to do that so i'm going to glue the pocket on first though because i might get a bit fancy we call i do it with collaging yeah, I might do that. And then I could put the lady on that I was going to use as a belly band. That's the wrong glue. It's a bit... I don't know I've put my Kalal glue, so guess what? I'm going to get my art glitter out. Yeah, my ordinary tacky glue, it's nearly empty. I need to fill it up. really hard to squeeze out Wee. that's it again I'll tell it we know he's gonna put glue on Wee. there we go that's enough do you know this comes out faster than my little bottle so I'm having to be really careful that'll be on the floor somewhere cat were in last night knocking things over i listened to the video back and you could hear the cat it was cute and the reason my kids were giggling on that first video the cat had a label stuck to a fur it's like oh wow yeah a label that had come off something had stuck to her she's a crafty cat right so that's that pocket let's find the lady that is not going to make it as a that's a journal card do you know what i'm going to put that in before we lose it i really am no we've got them in that's a spare one because i did two of each here we go here's the lady who didn't make it do you know i've now cut it down more than i should have so tell you what let's I'm not going to ignore her. I'm just not going to use her. Could I use... No, I've got her on a tag. I've got her on a tag. I really do want to use her. I'm going to cut her down and mat her on some of the backing paper. Yeah, because I can. Which piece shall I use? What's this? I don't know why I've got this out from previous projects. I've got all my stuff out ready. And I've just grabbed the wrong papers, haven't I? <clears throat> Here we go. I've got all the ones from Jody in this folder. So, where have you gone? Here we go. Which one shall we use? I think. I like that. Yeah, I do. I'm going to use that. Oh, well, that one. That one, I'm going to use the lighter one. I think it goes better with the lines. No, I'm going to use that. <laughs> oh, dear. My mum used to say to me, you'll never kill yourself making a decision. No, mum, I'm still like it. So I'm just chopping this down. I'm going to have to measure that this time with an actual ruler. It is three and one half, three and five eighths. So I want it a quarter less. So I want it three and three eighths wide and four inches high. Now, with hindsight, I should have done this before I glue it pocket on. It would make it easier, but that's what this ch my channel's all about showing you how to do it when it goes wrong, isn't it? So I'm going to do it three and three quarter inches high. 
and three and five eighths inch wide. We'll use that part. And this is one of the sheets from the backing set. There are other sheets from this set. It's three and five eighths inch wide. Let's see if we got that right. Oh no, what have I done wrong? What happened there? Three and three eighths inch wide, isn't it? Five eighths is the width of the pocket. That's what occurred there. So it's just a quarter of an inch smaller than the pocket all the way around. So what I'm going to do now is move my tro chopper out of my way. I'm going to line my pocket up where I want it. Because normally I would line those up before I glue them on and cut the semicircle out at the same time. But that boat's sailed, hasn't it? So I'm going to come in and mark, if my pencil would work, on the pa design paper where the semicircle is. It's not mega neat. And then I'm going to use my punch and I'm going to punch just outside that pencil mark so then when i put it on there you go where's my little scissors i'm just going to take a smidgen off there there you go sorted i want to need to round that bottom corner with the seven millimeter one get some ink on. Am I losing light? I think I'm okay, aren't I? No, because it's been lovely here today. 10 degrees it were. Mm. 16 degrees cooler than Dubai, for your information. Yeah, I don't like it too warm. One, I've put way too much weight on. I don't like warm weather. Even when I was slim, I never liked warm weather. Warm weather doesn't like me. Mosquitoes don't like me. And when I was younger, I used to come out in a horrible rash in the sun, which was very strange. Right, I'm going to stick this on with Kalal. It's thin paper. I'm not going to trust glue stick on an area this big, but I don't want to put the PVA glue on because it might wrinkle the paper. Decisions, decisions, isn't it, with glue? The glue trails. Right. And then when I've got this on, I'm going to put that lady on top of it as well. One of our Shakespearean ladies. I've been a bit heavy-handed with this glue today. Well, I were yesterday. But thankfully, it rubs off nicely. Just let's try and smush it inwards. There we go. Then we've got this Shakespearean lady. Yes, we're gonna trim her down a little bit more, I think, and pop her on there. I'm gonna get rid of some of that above her head. I'm not measuring it yet, I just I haven't decided. We'll just keep some of her bust. A chest. There you go. She'll go nicely like that. I'm not going to matter on anything else because again, I don't want this too bulky. Then it can be used in an in as an insert in another journal. I can't see my glue to put pin in. I'm not going to round the corners. No, I'm not because we haven't got rounded corners on our journal cards and everything. I'm going to keep a square. I think if I were doing a much thicker journal with spines, I may have put her in something that looked like a photograph. Yeah, we're just going to pop her there like that. A bit more collal. I 
can't not do it now. We we glow. There we go. Yeah, I'm being spoilt today. My eldest daughter Rebecca has been baking this afternoon. Quite naughty, really. Yeah, she's made another. What she made today? Treacle sponge. Oh, treacle sponge with golden syrup. She likes to bake from scratch. So yeah, we've got her there. I like that there. And I'm going to put some more of this same design paper on this curved pocket. So what I'm going to do with this is let's cut some at white off. Because again, I've already put pocket on. I tell you, I didn't even plan what I was going to do for this. But I quite often don't. Just take those out. I'm going to pop that inside the pocket. Am I going to, will I lose too much? Let's see if this works. No, it's not going to work. So what am I going to do? I'm going to use the same thing that we curved the edge for the pocket with. Yeah, I am. So I'm going to measure it. What was that? That was four and... Four and a quarter and we made it four and three quarters so I'm going to cut this down to a quarter of an inch less than that so it's going to be four was that the was it the width that were four and a quarter yeah and the height's four and three quarters so I'm going to cut it down to four right four and a half yep yeah. we just need to cut that curve off don't we we do do you know what i'm i'm gonna do a bit of freestyling here i'm gonna get my pencil and i'm gonna draw along you can feel where the card is you could even mark it with your finger look at that mark it with my finger then <laughs> follow it with the pencil and then again, I'm going to cut just inside it and see if I can make it look out like. If I can't, I'll go back to plan B, because this is plan C. And I'll draw around that tub that I drew around to get the shape on there. Oh, I need to cut a bit more off, don't I? But I've followed it pretty good there. So let's cut a little bit more off, just a sliver. It's like cutting a circle this, but not quite as difficult. I may end up with a piece of card uh, one by one inch. Let's cut that little point off that I've put on. you know what I'm going to do? It looks good there, it looks good there, it looks good there. I'm going to cut some off bottom. Cut that down a bit. See, so yes, what I would advise you to do is do this before you stick your pockets on. It's much easier to trace the shape and cut it. But, yeah, we've done it. And I need to cut this corner off with my 7mm one. Doing well remembering to put lid on me in. So yeah, I was saying my daughter's made trickle sponge. Oh. I can't decide if we're gonna have custard with it. And get this, she's also making our tea tonight. She made it last night. I feel like I've got a housekeeper, not a daughter. She's making a curry. A madras. A bit hot for me. I've got to have my yoghurt and mint to cool my mouth down when I have that. <laughs> but she's, she loves it. She loves doing all the vegetables. Chopping them all up. Yeah, I like that. 
So again, we're going with the Kalal. Yeah, when I first started crafting, I'm, I'm saying when I first started, when I went into paper crafting a long time ago, perhaps 20 years, I used to do a lot of cross stitching things before that. If I made a mistake, I'd, I'd like give up on project and do something else. And I think finding junk journaling has taught me that, well, I've always said, well, I don't know for how long I've said, you can never do it wrong. You can just do it different. But even so, if I were following a tutorial by someone, it had to be exact. And if I did it wrong, I'd do it again. But you don't have to do that. I think that's how ideas evolve, isn't it? When people do things slightly different, then someone else does it slightly different. Then before you know it, the original project is unrecognisable. And I think we all build off each other's ideas, don't we? So if you do try to do this and do it wrong, just... It's not wrong, it's different. I keep saying it. I think I need to, yeah, reassess my language. Yeah, you can't do it wrong, you can only do it different. It's a mantra, I need to remember it. I practice it, but I just don't know how to, yeah, <laughs> how to say it, I think. Right, I'm quite happy with that, I like that. Right. Do you know, I could have cut one of them out for there, couldn't I? No, it would have been too big for there. I could cut one of those out for there, make it a little tuck. But do I want to do that much fussy cutting on film? No, I don't think I do. I think I'm just going to leave it like that. So, let's put our bits and bobs back in. I'm going to get some seam binding for that because it's not a very deep thing. We've got journal card there we've got a tag there we're going to try and put a tag in there if it fits if not we're going to cut that down a little bit to make it narrower now which tag will look better a bit narrower i think this one because i want it to go in there so it's got to be the right size so i'm just going to take a sliver off each side so what does that measure? That is one sixteenth and a three and a quarter. So I'm going to take one eighth off each side to make this tag narrower. So I'm going to have to ink it again, aren't I? There we go. Yeah, we've got a narrower tag now. But this is how I... When I'm doing a new project, I change my mind all the time. It doesn't matter if you change your mind. If you don't like it, you don't like it, do you? If you think of something else that you could do, do it. That should now fit absolutely perfectly. Let's put the bone folder in first. Well, I'll use the ruler. Just to... Make sure that pocket's opened up, right up to where it's glued. And then this should fit in perfectly. It's still a bit tight. Why did I not check that before I inked it again? It's going to be a twig look this bit time it's done, a matchstick. Let's try it again. That's better. I only took... I took, a, look, I took that much off one side, so you can't tell. It's still even. <clears throat> so that's there. Now this belly band, that's there. And that's there. I'm going to make an envelope with my envelope punch board to tuck in there as well. Belly band. I want to do a belly band. Hey, I can use this corner. Gosh, you can, woman. You can use the other journal card. That'll be perfect. See, I didn't think of that before, did I? Let's measure that. 
Should be the same words it were last time. <laughs> Just inside the crease I'm going. I want it a smidgen wider than the actual paper. Because I'll never get it exactly right, so I want it a smidgen wider. So it wants to be four and a half, and then just, we'll add a sixteenth on. So it wants to be four and nine sixteenths. And again, I think I'm going to take it off that side, so four and eight sixteenths, nine sixteenths, cut. Cut it there. I didn't work that right. Oh, it did. That's it. Yeah, that is perfect. Now, I don't want it that wide, so I'm going to take a bit off the top and a bit off the bottom. Then I'm not measuring. I'll tell you what it measures when I've done, if you're doing it in a different paper. I'll just cut it down till it looks, till it looks nice. That, to me, looks nice. So... I'm not going to back it onto anything because remember this is the 250 GSM card and it'll be quite strong enough to hold something. It'll hold a tag or a notepad. Don't ink back woman. I've really gone mad with this inking today, haven't I? So that's going to go there found the proper glue this time. This is my cosmic shimmer that I like. Yay. There we go. We've got lines on here which are going to make it easy for me to line this up. Whether it's actually going to be straight or not is another matter, but it needs to look straight on the lines or it'll look wonky if that makes any sense whatsoever. Can you see it's just a smidgen wider than that paper? So there we have the belly band. I really do like these papers. I want to put something on there, but I'm going to check how this folds up now. Yeah, it's still quite a lovely slim profile. Mm. So I don't know. And in there, we can put a little notebook. Mm. Right, let's see what we've got left to play with. I've got these. I've got these when I printed out on actual paper. Mm. I wanted to do a collage tag, a focal tag for there. So I'm going to do it. That's paper. I've got these two tags we haven't used yet. So I'm going to use one of those and do a collage tag. Have I, print, I printed it out even bigger there. Yeah, there's two settings on my printer. Fit to page and just print as it is. And I get two different sizes. And the problem is, I forget which size I'm using sometimes. So yeah, we're going to do one collage tag to put in there. And I'm going to back it onto a piece of this. Craftland. Just, just go there and behave. Let's put this behind me. <laughs> I'm obviously less organised in day than at night. Yeah, I'm going to use this. So... We're going we're gonna to make sure we've got enough room for it to slip in with the glue. So if I make it three and three quarter inches, I could... Four's pushing it. An eighth under four I'm going to make it, which is three and seven eighths. And height-wise, well, it's eight eye, isn't it? We know that. So I'm going to use it from this side. Because then we'll cover up that label that's printed on it. I just want a piece that's eight inches long. Mm, less than eight inches long. I'm going to do it seven and a half. A nice big chunky tag. 
There you go. Ah, I can't do it from that end. I'm going to cut that there. Can you see what I mean about this? We've got a crease there. I'm going to cut that off as well. Don't try cutting your ruler. It's not good for your blade. Yeah, I'm going to cut it down to seven and a half. Ish. And then I'm going to make it the three and seven eighths wide that we want it. Can you see why I did that? I didn't want to cut straight through that barcode because I want to cover that up. I don't want you to be able to see it. Then we'll see whether that is going to fit. We might have to make it slimmer. I think just to be comfortable I want to make that a little bit slimmer. So we're cutting it down to three and three quarters. Because when we put some more papers on it, it's going to be a bit bulkier. I don't want to pull that belly band off when I slide it in. Let's try it again. Yeah, that'll be lovely then. We've got one big tag in the middle. I'm just going to pause for a quick tidy doing a tanya. And I'm back. When I first came back, I forgot to set camera going. So, what I did is... <laughs> I said I'd got the other papers out and I decided I'm going to make the tag from what was the other half of that paper. Yeah, I've also put a bit more light on because it's a little bit darker in here now. And what I did is I copied the shape of this tag at the top of this piece of card that's going to be our tag. So I'll show you how I did that by doing it again on the other side. So. I lined my tag up, yeah, to, that's roughly straight, and then I just drew around the top of Jodie's existing tag shape, I then got my centre ruler, I'm glad I'd not cut it before I realised I weren't filming, I got my centre ruler and I continued those lines to the edge of the tag there you go and I'm going to cut along those with my scissors I went for a tidy up and I grabbed a load more paper that's me all over that is and I'm just going to cut along the line I'll rub off any pencil marks that are left I'm going carefully I have to be very careful when I'm cutting curves. I just thought it'd be really nice to have this tag matching the other tags. So yeah, that was the other thing. I thought rather than collage, because I've not really done any other collage on projects, have I? And it might look odd just having this one collage tag. I would use the other half of that sheet of paper so there we have it that's the top of our tag now all cut i will rub the pencil lines off and then i'm going to cut this piece of paper down to fit yeah so i'm gonna have to do that tag shape again on my paper so firstly i'm going to cut the paper down to the size we want can you remember how big tag works? I certainly can't. I'd have to write it down for that. Seven and a half, I seem to remember that. By three and three quarters. So I'm going to cut this lovely lady down to seven and a quarter by three and a half. I'm going to cut some at the top off. And then I will measure down to where seven and a quarter is. And I'll just mark it with my pencil. Let's do it on the edge, it'll be much easier, woman. Seven and a quarter. This really is a look inside my mind, this one, isn't it? So those of you who've commented, it's nice to see inside my mind. You might change your mind after this. So we want it down to three and a half. Again, I'm just snibbling it down because all those other strips will get used in collage. Yeah, that'll be fab there. 
three and a half. So, yeah. That's it. So, that's that. I'm going to pop it where I want and then I'm going to carefully turn it over and I'm going to draw this shape Whee. I know there's no curve on the paper at the moment so now I'm going to come in from that shape that I've drawn I'm going to line the top of the tag up much the same as we did with the other tag onto this craft paper I've drawn those first so that I know I've not got it askew so that it's pretty straight ish I'm going to draw around I suppose I could have just done that in first place but you wanted to see how my mind works and then I'm going to cut along that pencil line I've drawn up back at uh, tag so it won't matter about any pencil marks that are left and then I'm going to hope that this lines up okay. <laughs> so I just love this shape. I wonder if there's some kind of punch you can get to do it. I wonder if you could use a circle or an oval or maybe a tab punch to get this shape. And I'm putting this on the side with the label. Because I don't want that showing on the back. That's where you need to write, isn't it? Yeah, that's... Yeah, I've gone up a little bit with that. You know when I've cut that bit straight? It's like gone up. It's not straight. So I'm just straightening that off. That's meta. Yeah, I quite like that. So let's come in with some ink. You've seen me inking of things I then chopped off today. It'd be nice to see me ink something that's here to stay. And I'll put the hole in after I've glued this down. Then we've got all matchy matchy tags. Like I say, had I been doing a thicker journal with uh, a spine, I would have perhaps matted the, the other tags onto some card like this. But it'll just make it far too thick. I'd love to do an actual journal in this paper. I do believe Jodie has plans to bring out a set two because this is called set one. Hmm? I've not actually asked her, but I will. Right. And let's get in with the Kalal again. So it is a, re a really simple project, this. I like some sometimes like things quite plain like this when you've got a nice when you've got nice papers. Sometimes less is more, isn't it? And I think this is one of those times. Then I'm just gonna wiggle some over the middle. could use glue stick but the tag is going to be coming in and out and I want to make sure it's stuck really really well and when this kalal gets a grip it's going nowhere so got a little bit of wiggle time there just to strain it all up and there we have it. Ooh, I've got a lot of kalal on there. Did you see it wiggle? Sometimes it wiggles when you don't want it to wiggle. So I'm just going to rub it. Yeah, I've been very heavy handed with this kalal today. I don't know what's got into me. I've used far more than I need to. I like to come in and smooth it all out. I don't like to feel the lines of glue underneath and this cloud does smooth out really well. I've had a bit squidge out at the top so we'll rub that off. 
comes off your mat well as well well as well there we go I think a lovely uh, turquoise seam binding would go nice on this I don't know whether I have any I could try and make one but I'm not going to get into dyeing seam binding today again that is something I wouldn't have ready at the beginning of my project this is one I'd think ooh I'll do that and then I'd mess doing it and then I'd put it on but I want to get this finished so I'm going to grab my existing seam bindings and see what we've got Should be in here, seam binding, is it? No, it's that one. I have two of these baskets for various bits. That's my ready dyed seam binding. And we'll have a look, see if anything is going to be suitable. Failing that, I'll get some cream out. Oh, I'm seeing one now that looks. Oh, that looks so perfect, doesn't it? Look at that. I hope I've got enough of it to go around. I couldn't tell you what colour this is. I'm guessing it's peacock feathers. I do seem to recall doing a decent length of this in peacock feathers. Is that it but paler or is that a green? I don't know, but it goes well, doesn't it? Even these pinks go well. Oh, I'm spoilt for choice. You know, when you're drawn to certain colours, and I was drawn to the colours in this kit, and I can now see why. <laughs> you can tell how long this seam binding's been done, can't you? It's all tangled. But it just goes so well. I've got knots in it. I ought to still wrap it round cards, even though it's the crinkly one. But I think because it's crinkly, I'll just, just crinkle it up and chuck it in a bag. That's definitely green. But let's have a look at these pinks. Let's get the folio out. And let's... Oh, that's so lovely. Put your ink lid on, woman. Let's have a look what pinks I've got. That's too pink, that is. That's way too pink. What about this? That's too peach. No, I don't think I've got an appropriate pink. Which is quite sad, really. Oh, is that okay? No, it's too pink. I know it's too pink, so I'll stop whining, put it away. And I'm just going to grab some. I've got a pack there that I bought. I don't know if you ever remember a site called The Ribbon Girl. She used to do some gorgeous things. Uh, she closed down a couple of years ago, maybe a year ago, and she had a fabulous sale on. And I've got some things then. I think there's a pink in here that will go nicely. That might be a bit too light. And then again, the other's too dark. Did I buy two the same colour there? I did. <laughs> I like pink. Again, you can see that the colours I've bought match this kit. I think I do think that's still fine. Yeah. Ooh, look at that greeny colour. Might be a bit too green and not enough turquoise. I'm all excited now, can you tell? Because I found this ribbon ready done that matches perfectly oh let's punch an hole in there before i get too excited where have i put it <laughs> i've had that chomper out here it is i bet you were saying it's there so i'm going to punch a hole in here i'm going to have to draw it on because it'll be a disaster if i do it freehand going to be about there isn't it there we go do I want to put some I'm going to put some little reinforcement rings on I'm going to put these craft ones on because it matches the colour of the file folder another option would be to just colour some in yeah they look good yeah i used to have alcohol markers and i colored a lot in with those but my daughter is a budding artist Al becker 
she's now got all my alcohol markers she's she's so thrilled and when my next door neighbor moved house she's really into coloring hello Bo. she gave me this uh unit that holds your markers it's in her new craft room i don't think she was going to use it i may be remembering that all wrong she definitely gave it me and i struggled to find room in here for it so but in becca's craft in becca's craft room in our becca's bedroom it fits perfectly on a desk so she's got all the pro markers in separately i think it holds 70 odd and then she's got all of her art supplies stacked on top right so there we go i've just put some brown reinforcement rings on top of those tags just to finish them off and now i'm going to put i'm going to see how much of this i need to wrap around the whole thing because if you're not going to put it in a journal you've got to have something wrapped around but when i do these that could be in a journal or as a standalone project i don't tend to put any permanent i don't put permanent holes in and permanent ways of permanent closures that's the word i'm looking for so it goes like that then like that and this color oh it's just so perfect isn't it and i like to wrap it around a good two three times so that's one two three we'll slide it down so we're not covering a face oh that'll be fabulous and we've got enough left for tag tops so i'll cut that off there <laughs> i'm covered in seam binding i do love seam binding and do you know when i were a card maker the fact that the a's ends would fray drove me insane i couldn't use it but now i'm a junk journaler i can live with it so we want some on the top of these tags i think i'm gonna go green green pink we've just got to have some pink in our life aren't we and right i think i remember somebody once asking in miss p's group how do you crinkle seam binding well it's this easy it's easier if you use a bit of water but i don't want to have to dry it so i'm just gonna scrunch it up don't be gentle with it be rough and there you go crinkled seam binding you can roll it up in a ball there you go crinkled seam binding voila So how am I going to do it? Am I going to do bows at top? No, I'm not, because that's going to take up a lot of room. I want all my fasteners dangling out at top at journal. So I'm just going to thread some through, like that. I've got to cut some at frayed bits off. Cut it off. I'm going to do the same with these other two tags. I'm even on camera here. I think when I had to take my camera down to I had to switch it. I thought my battery had gone. When I looked up and saw that it wasn't filming, I thought my battery had gone or my memory were full. So I took the camera down and then I realised all I'd actually done is forgot to press play like a numpty. Like you do. Well, like I do. So I've cut those off. And then I'm going to get some of my really fine twine and tie it round the top no I'm not I'm gonna get some yeah I'm gonna get some of that eyelash trim eyelash trim so we get a little bit of fluff at the top I mean I'm standing up to get in these baskets again that sparkly eyelash trim the non sparkly must be in the other basket no it hasn't it's fallen off there we go let's see what colours I've got I may not have the colours I want here actually but I'm looking at that pink am I in that pink up that might be a bit too bright we've got some white I think the white's going to be a little bit 
better. I think the pinks. Is that white or pale lilac? I can't tell in electric light, but I'm using it anyway. So, I'm just going to put it round, tie it. This is all in aid of not having any thick knots at the top inside, yeah? We're keeping the profile low. I'm going to tie it twice and then I'm going to cut it off. I'm not going to make bows out of this. It doesn't need it. You've got all the fluff and stuff. So that's one. Whee. This will be two. Yeah, I've got a bit of counting things as I do them. Oh yeah, I do like it. And this will be the last one. And I'm so chuffed with this. I think the only thing we're going to need to finish this off is maybe a butterfly and a flower charm hanging on bull pins on the front. I seem to want to do that on everything lately. I think that's because I want to get you some charms used. It's time to stop hoarding the charms. I'm just going to ink around that. We've already got the faux tea dye on the back. Oh, I'm going to make an envelope, won't I? I don't know how long I've been going now. You know we're doing this in two halves. Yeah, I'm going to do an envelope. When I did my uh, gadgets and gizmos, showing the envelope punch board, I never actually showed you how to do an envelope. And that is that. I really like this. Where's my other tag gone? <laughs> That's better. Look at that. Very simple. Very... Well, it's not plain because of the papers. Very unfussy. It lets the papers shine. And it's still a very slim profile look. So you could tuck that inside a journal. Really pleased with how that's gone. Really pleased. So I'm just going to show you a quick envelope. If you don't need to see an envelope, thank you and I'll see you next time. Hello, it's envelope time. Yeah, I just had a quick tidy up and a quick cupper. Now we're going to put another throat sweet in. Make sure I'm not <laughs> in. I'll just do that now. Right, I've grabbed my envelope punch board and I've cut a piece of paper, design paper, to 8 inch by 8 inch. Yeah, so let's have a look on here. Because I've decided the envelope I want to make which one was it now this one three and a half inches by six yeah so if we look at the journal i'll get my ruler this is how i decide i pop it in there and the envelope can't be bigger than four and a quarter really then i have to look at what's possible with the paper i've got it can't be higher than about seven and a quarter I then look at my paper, the maximum width I can have my paper is 8 by 8 because that way I've printed it. So I look, hmm, what can I do in 8 by 8 paper? So I look down this paper size section. I look at what I could do with slightly smaller paper too, but I've settled on this 3.5 by 6. So I'll grab my piece of 8 by 8 paper, grab that. And it's telling me I need to score at three and one eighths of an inch. So I'm going to line that up at three and one eighths. I'm going to punch and I'm going to score. <laughs> that totally didn't go down the score line, did it? I'm going to score there. <laughs> Good job I weren't pressing hard. That's probably why I weren't pressing hard enough. Right, then I need to turn my paper round. And I know there were a bit of a discussion in Miss P's 
junk journal group and I think this is where people get confused they want to try and line that up to three and one eighth you don't at that point you need to line that little notch up with the line you've just scored like that I think that's right I'm just gonna have to tilt it up at light I have also increased my light as well because it's getting pretty dark outside so then you punch and you score again yeah you then turn it around that way again and you line it up with that score line just check it does actually end up being that three and an eighth inch the second time you turn it do you know this is so old now it's not punching really brilliantly on paper i think it's coming to end of its punching life and i honestly don't know if you can replace that part on them so yeah it punches better if you do it quick then you turn it round again keep going anti-clockwise that's it line it up with that crease one more time punch and score and then you've got your envelope base all right one other thing when you're doing the long the envelopes that are longer than they are wide sometimes these pointy flaps end up being longer than your envelope let's see I'm just going to have to neaten this edge up before I see that because it's really not punched well. This is not a defect in the envelope punch board. This is a symptom of my envelope punch board being about six, seven year old <laughs> and having had quite a lot of use. Still works fine on card. They're never quite as good on paper, but don't you find that with paper punches anyway? They work much better on thin card than actual paper. It sort of defies name them really, doesn't it? that's neaten that up so yeah you'll fold that flap over with the crease oh this one's fine but some of the narrower tall envelopes you'll find that that flap is longer than the envelope and all you have to do is cut it off right there we go and there we have an envelope i don't like the look of it much at minute now i've folded it up i'm going to decide which way up i want it it's not going to be straight across your paper because it's like on a diagonal isn't it but i'm going to decide which is top of my envelope and which is bottom because this background's music paper it doesn't really matter so i'll turn it back that's going to be my flap and that's going to be the bit of glue and i'm just going to cut this pointy bit off now if you're in one of those situations where the envelope flap is longer than your envelope just do this cut it off somewhere perhaps there you won't have the rounded pointy envelope but it will still work and again i think that's another reason i think i will do a video just on envelopes a couple of people have asked me i know there's plenty of others out there but yeah i'm gonna do one <laughs> If only to reinforce these things in my mind. I might do it with teeny tiny envelope punch board. I love that one. I really do struggle to read the numbers. So I've come up with a plan. I'm going to photograph the board and then I'm going to blow it up bigger and I'm going to print it out. I'll print it out and laminate it so I can see. That actually might be better for doing the tutorial, yeah? you'll be able to see the numbers along with me hmm. see up there for thinking down there for dancing i mustn't be very good at dancing today because i've just had an idea yeah i'm just quickly inking this i know this video was long but we have already said goodbye once haven't we this is just for people who want to see an envelope isn't it if i can figure out how to yeah but yeah i can do it i'll have to watch the video decide at what point we start making the envelope then if anyone wants to just see an envelope they can and i'll put that in the description yeah that's the plan whether that will happen is another thing it's me i sometimes think i need to record what i say oh i am doing them on a video <laughs> remind me what i'm gonna do oh that was just so blonde weren't it i was blonde before i went gay i'm what before i went gray 
I'm not having to go at blonde people or gay people. Oh no. Julie, just stop. Right, because I know my envelope punch board's getting a bit blunt, I'm going to round my envelope corner off with my bog standard corner rounder. Oh dear. I'm not inking inside. I just Life's too short at a minute, isn't it? I'm going to get my kalal and I'm going to put a little bit of glue along there. I'm not going right to the top or it might... See where that meets? I might get a little bit of glue that goes onto inside envelope. So not quite at top with that. Am I on camera? Yeah. Is the glue coming out? Is it X? Because I didn't put pin in and I've got a dried up blob in the top. Same there. Not quite at top. And then I'm going to put a bit there. This time it doesn't matter if it's right at top because that's all going to get covered up, isn't it? There we go. Pop that down. And there we have an envelope. I love my envelope punch board. When I were doing greeting cards, I don't even know whether this will work anymore because I've had it years. You can buy this stuff called Lick and Stick. It's a re-moistable envelope glue. So you would then put it on there, let it dry, and then this envelope would be usable. You could lick it like, or do it with a damp sponge, like you would a normal envelope. Yeah. Lick and stick. And I love how it's got the dog on the front <laughs> with its tongue hanging out. Yeah, lick and stick glue. I don't know if it goes off. I'm not going to open it and show you because I don't want any licky sticky stuff on this one. So that's your envelope if you wanted to see it. I've just realised now the people who didn't want to see an envelope are not going to see the journal closed with stuff on. Anyhow. So envelope goes in there with my journal card. And we'll then and then we'll put our seam binding around it. Which is shorter than it should be because I have actually cut my tag tops off the one that we're gonna wrap around it. So we've got it wrapped round twice now instead of three times. So there we have it. That is the finished little flippy flappy folio i'm quite pleased with that i really am yeah so thank you for joining me i hope it weren't too rambly again i said that and then people say no it's fine it's horses for courses isn't it yeah some people like ramblers some don't personally i like to watch ramblers so i don't know why i worry anyway thank you for joining me and i will see you next time thank you very much bye